This video will focus on the Rockefeller family. Our goal is to unveil the ambition and ability of the Rockefellers to create a one world government. The following quotes will help demonstrate the ambition of the Rockefellers. Quote number one, for more than a century, ideological extremists at either end of the political spectrum have seized upon well-publicized incidents such as my encounter with Castro to attack the Rockefeller family for the inordinate influence they claim we wield over American political and economic institutions. Some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that is the charge, I stand guilty and I am proud of it. Page 405 of Rockefeller Family Patriarch David Rockefeller's autobiography entitled Memoirs. This particular quote reveals a sinister plot by the Rockefellers to work against the best interests of the United States to create a one world government. Quote number two. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discussion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. David Rockefeller, founder of the Trilateral Commission, in an address to a meeting of the Trilateral Commission in June 1991. In this quote, David Rockefeller thanks the mass media for essentially covering up the Rockefeller plan for a one world government. Quote number three, the drive of the Rockefellers and their allies is to create a one world government combining super capitalism and communism under the same tent, all under their control. Do I mean conspiracy? Yes, I do. I am convinced there is such a plot, international in scope, generations old in planning, and incredibly evil in intent. Congressman Larry P. McDonald, 1976. Video clips of Larry McDonald speaking on the New World Order are available on YouTube and are also located in our favorites. Quote number four. The Trilateral Commission is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interests by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The Trilateral Commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power, political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. What the Trilateral Commission intends is to create a worldwide economic power superior to the political governments of the nation states involved. As managers and creators of the system, they will rule the future. U.S. Senator Barry Goldwater in his 1964 book, With No Apologies, this particular quote highlights the Trilateral Commission. We will reveal the link between the Rockefellers and the Trilateral Commission later in this video. Many of these quotes are extremely shocking. They all merit further investigation by the viewer. Based on these quotes, from the testimony of respectable men, and from the mouth of David Rockefeller himself, we can conclude that the Rockefeller family has at least the ambition to create a one world government. Yet, ambition and the will to bring a one-world government to fruition are ineffectual without the means to do so. Therefore, we will now reveal the power and ability of the Rockefeller family to carry out their hidden desires. As many of you already know, the Rockefeller family is one of the wealthiest families on the planet, with independent estimates pointing upwards of 11 trillion US dollars. The Rockefellers have a proven history of lying in order to conceal their true wealth. They own the majority stake of ExxonMobil, 
which is the world's largest publicly traded oil company and the world's largest company by revenue. Exxon holds the record for highest profits of any company ever. The Rockefellers also own J.P. Morgan Chase, which is the largest banking institution in America by deposits and market cap. Chase, in turn, operates the largest hedge fund in America. It was during David Rockefeller's years as chairman of Chase that he devised a plan to build the World Trade Center complex. And with the cooperation of former New York State Governor Nelson Rockefeller, the Rockefeller family commissioned the first designs for the World Trade Center. Along with the World Trade Center, the Rockefellers have been involved in many large real estate projects, such as One Chase Manhattan Plaza, the Council of the Americas, the Museum of Modern Art, Colonial Williamsburg, the Lincoln Center, the Embarcadero in San Francisco, and many more. The Rockefeller family has also been instrumental in creating and sharing various private and politically motivated institutions, including the Council on Foreign Relations. From its inception, the Rockefellers funded the Council on Foreign Relations, while John D. Rockefeller Jr. created the first CFR headquarters, and David Rockefeller became the youngest director of the Council on Foreign Relations and subsequent chairman. Another early member of the council was Rockefeller's public relations liaison, Ivy Lee. The Council on Foreign Relations think tank is entitled the David Rockefeller Studies Program. There is no doubt that the Rockefellers control the Council on Foreign Relations. The Council on Foreign Relations is said to have more power than the U.S. State Department itself and more influence on America's foreign policy than any other institution. Council on Foreign Relations members include John McCain, Hillary Clinton, George H.W. Bush, Alan Greenspan, Henry Kissinger, Jay Rockefeller, Fred Thompson, Paul Volcker, Zbigniew Brzezinski, and Dick Cheney, who was also the director of the Council on Foreign Relations before becoming vice president for George W. Bush.